it down. We got G, what do you call that on your phone now, GPS? How many of y'all grew up in the 70s when your dad always knew a shortcut? My dad's shortcuts took seven hours longer. There, there's, you ever, you, ever, you ever try to take a shortcut or try to do something you think is going to be the best way to go and it takes forever? You know, I want to talk to you about your relationship with Jesus Christ tonight. I want to talk to you about that there's no shortcut to victory. Amen. Say that with me. Say there's no shortcut to victory. You know, you just, you just sometimes you just got to grind it out, right? You know, you got to grind out the sermon. How many, how many, how many ministers we got in here? Raise your hand. You ever had to grind it? Julie, remember last time you was doing your sermon? You had to grind it out, didn't you? He's like, man, she said I had about six pages of notes. It only took me five minutes to read it, you know. Praise the Lord. But you just got to get through it, right, Wally, at the jail? You know, sometimes when guys ain't paying attention, you just got to grind it out. There's no shortcut to victory, you understand? You know, that what we got to do, to get, to infiltrate the earth, I got to go to Juan Cayo. To infiltrate the earth, amen, I got to build a bigger building. You see what I'm talking about? That we got to expand our horizons. There's no shortcut to this thing. I wish there was. There is no shortcut to victory, right? So I want to talk about that today. I want you to keep that in mind. God's plan for me and you has never changed. Now, y'all change it. You try to twist it, turn it, burn it, quit on it, all that kind of stuff. But God's plan for you has never changed, okay? So everybody agree with that? Okay. So Jesus came, and he took the punishment for sin. And why did he do that? Does anybody know? Why did Jesus come and take the punishment for sin? Okay, that's that's one reason. But you know what he, you know you know what he did. Let me put it in a shot. He he did that to recapture, okay, what had been lost. He came. He did that. Jesus came to all the punishment, all the beating, everything for sin to recapture what had been given up by Adam. Right? What had been lost. So he came back. I got scripture for it. Luke, Luke nineteen ten. Put it up. Luke nineteen ten. Anybody know this? This was a memory verse for me when I was a kid. It says, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save that which was lost. Okay? So, you see right there? So what did Jesus do? Why did he come back and take the punishment for sin? Here it is. He spoke these words. He said, for the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. To recapture what Adam had given away. Not only was man lost. So we know we were lost without a hope, right? Say amen. Y'all know salvation. We got born again people in here. All right, y'all act like it. So, not only was man lost... But he had lost, how many of y'all read Believer's Authority? You know your authority in the earth. Some of you are reading Charles Caps right now, right? The powerful force of, of the tongue and all that stuff. Not only was man lost, but he lost his dominion in the earth. Jesus came to retake both of those. You will be taught about salvation, but, you will, a lot, but most places will never t- teach you that you were created to take back dominion in the earth. I'm going to prove to you tonight that he came and did both. And I'm going to show to you tonight how Satan, you're blessed to be here tonight. Because I learned something new in this, doing this. Amen? Say, I'm blessed. <laughs> I, hope, I hope you'll say that when you leave. But watch this. We're in a fast, right? All right, remember when Jesus went on a 40-day fast? Satan tried to ruin that plan that Jesus had, that God had for Jesus. He tried to ruin that plan at the end of the 40-day fast. So when you're going through a fast, and you know you're in a plan, and you know that God, you're trying to elevate to a new level. You know, rest assured, you're going to be challenged on that plan. Amen? Remember that. All right? So look at what Satan said. Let's look at that. All right, let me stop here. The devil knew he wasn't worthy, right, of, of Jesus' worship. What did the devil, why did the devil get kicked out of heaven? Somebody tell me. What do you want everybody to do? Worship him, right? Amen? So do you know what Satan wants more than anything else? He don't care about your kids. He don't care about drugs. He don't care about all that stuff. He don't care about nothing else. He wants people to worship him. He desires worship more than anything else. You know, people say, oh, the devil runs my life. The devil don't care about controlling you. He just wants you to worship him. I'm going to teach you something tonight. Get ready. That's all he wants. He don't want nothing else. That's when you go to these, these devil worshiping thing concerts where they're blah, 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 blah. And they're all the people, have you ever, now we go to church and we raise our hands, get plumb wild in here for Jesus, right? People call us idiots. But you go to a Metallica concert or somebody else, I don't even know, that, I'm old school, that's the only one I can think of, right? They're worse than them now. And you see people jumping around, banging their heads and all that kind of stuff. I ain't down on any of that. Country music's got the same way. But the enemy wants that worship. He's stealing that worship from God. It belongs to the, see, we got all messed up. Those places should be dead. Amen. And they should be getting no glory. And the house of God should look like a Metallica concert. We should have a mosh pit. 
Amen. I'm serious. But, but what it is, so, so I want you to notice, the devil knew he wasn't worthy of Jesus' worship, but he also knew that Jesus had came to take back what man had given away. Okay? So he knew, Satan ain't no fool. Amen. Yeah, he, he's a lot smarter than all you because he's smarter than me sometimes. I guarantee he's smart. Okay? He's a sly little booger and he, he, he don't have no time zone to mess you up. So let's look at what he said. Look at Luke 4, 6, and 7. I'll prove what I just said. Luke 4, all right. And the devil said to him, all this, see, you don't care about, the devil don't care about authority. You understand, right? You got that. He said, all this authority I will give you. Okay? And their glory, for this has been delivered to me. How did, all right, some of you ain't never heard this. I bet some of you never heard this. How did Satan get, how did Satan get authority in the earth? Satan had authority that he really don't even want. For this has been delivered to me. Delivered to me by Adam. Delivered to me when they fell in the Garden of Eden. So he didn't, even, he didn't care. All, he, all Satan wants is worship. He didn't care about the authority. Because he, he knows he really didn't have authority. He knew Jesus came to take it back. So he said, all this authority I will give you because, and their glory for this has been delivered to me and I, and I give it to whomever I wish. Now go to seven. Therefore, if you will what? What does he want? If you worship me, all this will be yours. I'm going to break this down. So notice this. You probably haven't been taught this. The devil said, and I said, this has been delivered to me. Watch this. Satan couldn't steal it. It had to be given to him. Okay? Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Satan has no right to steal, kill, and destroy if we don't allow him to do so. He can only have what we give him. Go back to six. I'm going to prove it to you. Watch this. You see what I'm talking about? Go back to 6, 4 and 6. And the devil said, All this authority I will give you in their glory, for this has been delivered to me. So how does the devil get authority in your life? You give it to him. How does he rule and reign in your life? It's through what you gave away. <laughs> you see it? Now you're getting it, right? So he said, This has been delivered to me. He goes, I, come, He don't even really want it. He just wants you to worship him. That's all he desires. So he couldn't steal it. It had been given to him. And he was like, he was saying to Jesus, I know what you came for. I know what you want. Worship me and I'll give you the keys of authority that man has gave away and lost through sin. Now Jesus is smarter. Now, Jesus knew his time. He was just coming out of the wilderness, right? He had to go heal the sick, cast out devils, raise the dead, do all that kind of stuff. He knew his time wasn't near, right? But, and, but Jesus said no to that shortcut. Watch this. So he said, no way the shortcut, and he refused to give him any honor. And, and I said this, Satan loves to get all a man to worship and talk about him. And, you know, it was his desire in heaven that worship, and worship is what got kicked him, kicked him out in the first place, right? So I want to give you scripture to show you that. Look at Isaiah 14 and 12. But let me stop right there. When we talk about him, and I'm using it in context, and I only like giving him glory. But like we wake up and we say the devil's been on my back all week. Or, or the devil made me do it. You know, I don't know why the devil don't get out of my life. He loved, that is worshiping him, okay? I'm giving you tools to combat him and show you how goofy he is and how sly he is. But what I'm telling you is the more that you talk about him, the more that you worship him. And he loves to hear his name. How many of y'all know that people love to hear their name? I got a guy that's on one of my conference calls. He's a new area director and he won't shut up. Have you ever known people who love to hear themselves talk? That's the way Satan is. He loves it, so he loves to hear his name. But look at Isaiah 14 and 12. It says, How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How you were cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. Look at 13. Did I give you 13? No, I'm sorry. So, but what, what happened is, Jesus didn't give in. And that's why we can't give in. He held his course. He knew he had come to die. See, the devil wanted him to cut short his path to victory, right? Because Satan, after all, really didn't care about the keys. I don't have any keys. But he didn't, he didn't care about the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He didn't care about authority. All he cared about was the worship of him. So he, he knew Jesus was going to take him back. But he didn't want him to go on the cross and die. And I'll show it to you and I'll prove it. So God wanted Satan. Do you know, do you know why Satan was trying to play this little trick and play this little thing on Jesus? Because God wanted Satan defeated by a man. The son of man. Alright? You see that? So, 
So Jesus, who shed his blood to redeem man, he gave away his rights as God, right? Did he not? Why did he do that? Anybody know? Why did he give his rights away as God and take the form of man? Because Satan had to be defeated by a man, the son of man, right? Why did he give his rights away? People know I ever taught you this. Y'all, that's why y'all sitting here looking at me like religious people looking at me like crazy. Jesus took off that, that king of king and lord of lord thing and he became a man so he could whoop the devil in his own game. That, listen to me people, that is the only way he could be defeated. That's the only way that order could be restored to the earth was a man take back what a man had gave away. You ought to write that down. A man had to take it back because a man gave, God gave it to man. So, God is smart, isn't he? He had to figure out how to get Jesus, the, this mighty man of God, this entity, the king of kings and lord of lords, he had to figure out how to get him on earth as a man. And, and I'm going to tell you, it's hard to be supernatural like that and then come in and be a man and say, so, hey, what I'll do is, you know, create a seed and Jesus had to agree to it and he was born as a woman. That's why he had to go through pain. He had to, to be, see, had he came as a king, he just dropped out of the sky and he whooped the devil. He went, it went to work because he had to face pain. He had to discover who he was. He had to set the example. He had to come back and do everything that, everything that the word said and had been prophesied to bring back order into the earth. You see that? And did he do it? Yes, he did. Amen. He walked him. Now I'm going to break it down and I'm going to show you. So you can understand how in your life, how he works in your life to try to steal and try to pull away what you've already got. Jesus gave it back to you, right? So <clears throat> God wanted Satan defeated by man, one made in his image. How, how does he want Satan defeated on the earth today? By a man created in his image. Empowered with the Holy Spirit, right? Right? We got the Holy Ghost. So Jesus, who has shed his blood to redeem man, Gave away all his rights as God. He took on the form of man. So, Satan was defeated by that man. Now, as you receive the reward of Christ through salvation, right? We all become grafted in to the victory at the cross, right? We talk about at the cross, at the cross. So, through everything that Jesus did at the cross, we became a part of that victory, right? So, Jesus whooped the devil. We whooped the devil, right? All keys, all authority he got. But not only that, he didn't have to bow down and worship him. I'm going to show you what happens here. So, we all agree that we became part of the victory, right? There's no shortcut to it. Jesus, he, listen, couldn't, could he have called ten legions of angels to take him off the cross? The Bible says he could have, right? He could have said, bump this, I'm out of here. And let, but he did it because he knew the order had to be restored to the earth. The earth would not have lasted much longer, had it not. If none of us would have ever been born. We got to enjoy our children. We got to enjoy our life. We wouldn't have got to enjoy the earth and the beauty and the sky and everything else. But God so loved the world, he sent his only son to die that we would all have everlasting life. But not only that, that we would have the, have the same power that Adam had in the Garden of Eden, amen, that he had all authority and all dominion in the earth. And that we don't have to bow down and worship the devil. We don't have to give the devil glory. And when we allow sickness and we allow domain and thoughts and evil thoughts to come in our mind, we're allowing the devil to steal that victory away that he has no right to. That's why people in the church have no power anymore because they've gave it away. The only power that Satan has over you is what you've given away. And I'm going to tell you this. You need to be like David and say, God, and you can ask God. I know what he's going to tell you. Shall I pursue my victory? And God's going to say, pursue it. Go take back what he stole. And I'm going to tell you, he's going to give it back because he ain't got no right, he don't have no right to it. He don't want it. All he wants is your worship anyway. He's just holding it because you, you gave it to him. He said, I just got this authority. I don't really want it. I'll give it back to you. Jesus is like, I, I, know you, I know how crazy you are. But we became grafted into that victory, right? Jesus de defeated the devil with his sinless life. He defeated him in his death by paying for our sins with, the blood, with his blood, right? And again in the resurrection, he, you know, right, he rose up out of the day for, after three days with the keys of death and hell. So he whooped the devil, got on the cross, shed his blood for our sins, then he went down to the pits of hell. You can read this with Peter. He whooped the devil there, took the keys to death, hell, and the grave, came out of the resurrection with them to give to mankind. Amen? He got back. Jesus got back. But he had to get it back as a man. And there was no other way. Man, there was no way man could get into the earth. You understand what I'm talking about? And take back what the devil had said. Remember, the people were dying under the promise in that time, right? 
So Jesus, had, he was the only one through the shed blood of the ultimate sacrifice. That's how, that was his ticket to get into hell. Are you with me? Now, religious people get mad. They say, Jesus never goes to hell. He, he didn't have to. He went, whooped the devil, took him, and let the captives out. Now, I'm going to tell you this. Nobody else is going to tell you this, silly. Amen. There was a resurrection of the dead when Jesus gave up the ghost on the cross. Amen. There's already been a first resurrection. That blows away all your, all your, all your, uh, what is that stuff? Uh, those, uh, yeah, what is that uh, movie? Uh, what's that movie they always, uh, Left Behind stuff? Oh, that's way with it. I was, in, I was in Israel while all this stuff took place. And, and we were praying, believing, and the Jew, guy, the Jew guy that we had, he was like, he goes, one thing we can't explain, while well, all these graves, he pointed over outside the eastern gate, how they all got open. I said, I know how they got open. Amen. The Bible says David and all them were seen walking around in the city. It freaked everybody. I walked around. When Jesus was on, when Jesus was on the earth 40 days, there were people come out of the grave walking around the earth. And they were seen by everybody. Yes. Nobody tell you that either. Right. Amen. But see, they couldn't have, if, if Jesus had not came and could, took back what the devil stole, okay, all authority, those people like David and Moses would have never came out. Right. And people say, well, they're still there. No, they're not. They couldn't still be there. When the, listen to me. When the blood was shed, everything that had died rose up. Because yes. <laughs> they had to. Because they died under the promise of Jesus coming. And when Jesus ascended into heaven, they all went with him. <laughs> Take that religion. I don't care if you believe me, you study it all day. You'll, you know what? It's there. You study it, you'll see it. So Jesus got back what man had given away. From his throne of victory, he declared this. Watch this. Matthew 28 and 18. All right, I think you got this? Praise the Lord. Y'all getting something out of this? You're learning something, aren't you? And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. You see that? Okay. Go to 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 20. Teaching them to observe what? All things that I have commanded you, right? Everything I just told you. Is the church today, are people today teaching what I just taught you? No. Uh, they're telling you Jesus died for your sins. That's it. They don't tell you what the devil wanted. They don't tell you that the devil don't really care. See, people always say, oh, the devil's running rampant in the earth. The devil don't want, he don't even want the power he's got in earth. He don't want it. The only power he has, they say nations, the devil's running that nation over there. No, he's, he's running because they gave him authority. Amen. The only authority he has is what you give. He, what he said, all authority I have is what people, what they gave me and gave to me. So when you let him run, you got sickness in your life, you let the devil run, you got depression, you're having bad thoughts, it's your fault, not, not the devil's. You made a bad decision yesterday, you used to, you know, you dropped some profanity and all that stuff, and you blame the devil for it. Don't blame the devil, blame yourself. You gave him the authority to run rampant in your life by your choices. In other words, he said, I got it all back. He's telling the disciples, I'm telling you this. Jesus got everything back that Adam gave away. You ain't got to wait till you get to the promised land because I'm going to tell you, people don't really, see, the church and the devil don't want you to know this. You are in the promised land. You're in the land of harvest. You're walking in, by the streets of gold. If we don't have streets of gold in America, I don't know what we do. You're walking on the streets of gold. He said, I got it all back. Now go use everything I just told you to recover the earth. You have authority. You have the blood of Jesus Christ. You have... When, the sisters that came to him said, Jesus, had you just been here, my brother Lazarus would not have died. He said, you have no idea. I am the resurrection. Those that come to me shall not die but live. We are the walking, living resurrection of Jesus Christ on this earth. Though they, though they may look like they're dead, they ain't dead. Amen. <laughs> so when they say, Bishop, if you'd only been here, stuff would have happened. We are the walking, living resurrection. Jesus gave, did Jesus give you all the blood? 
Did he? Give you the blood of Jesus? Did he give it? It's running through your veins, right? Then he gave you power. He gave you the power over this earth. He gave you the resurrection. He gave you res resurrection power will change the earth. Amen? Because that means you can't keep us down. You can't stop us. You can I, I am who I am. Amen? I am what I am. I am what I am said I am. Oh, shut that book up. I set it to my car. I am what I said I am. The resurrection and the life. Ha. You are the door. You are the gatekeeper. The enemy. That's why you're the enemy. The enemy don't care. Listen. He don't care about. That's why you're a threat to him. And that's why he's challenging you right now. When you fast and pray. You're getting closer to God. And, and he's going to challenge you. Worship me. Worship me. I'll give you all 30. Here. You know what? I'll, you show them. You see what I'm talking about? He tries to entice you out of the resurrection. He tries to talk, talk you out of the power. He tries to talk you out of the worship that you're giving him and the domain you're giving him and the things that you've let him have in your life. Think about, think about what's going on in your life right now and the troubles you have or things that you gave away and you've worried about. Instead of casting your cares upon God and walking with resurrection power, you walk defeated most of the time. Most, most believers today walk around with a defeated spirit. They walk around with, oh, woe is me. They're so jacked up on prescri prescription drugs are worse than illicit drugs now. Because people have a sense of security in that a doctor gives to them. Can, can I tell you all something silly? Doctors don't care about you. And you say, oh, my doctor does. Doctors don't care. They care about signing you. See, some pharmaceutical person comes into their place and says, hey, if you can push these pills, I'll give you 25 I'll give you $200 every prescription you write. Well, oh, you know, you know what I'm talking about. And then you start feeding them to people, and you get them, y'all like candy. They eat them up, and they get addicted, and they want to come back. Right? Legal drug dealers. And what you're doing is you're taking your sanity and your domain and your, your, your resurrection power and you're giving it to appeal. That's how silly we are now. We didn't give away our power and our authority. We, we, are, we, are, we, are, uh, we are slaves to drugs, to our jobs, to our children, to our telephones. We are slaves to that thing and we have no time for the kingdom of God anymore. You know, you know what? Most, the church wouldn't know what resurrection power was if it hit them in the face. Right? But he said, I got it, I, he said, I got it all back. Now go use this to recover the earth. Jesus fulfilled his promise. He fulfilled every promise that he had made to his disciples when he said this. Look at Matthew 16, 19. Okay? I want you to understand this. You people, I said it a little bit Sunday. I said the church has an identity crisis. You have an identity crisis. I'm pointing the finger back at me too. Right? So he said, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Of what? Who is he giving the Who is he giving the keys to heaven? You mean I've got the keys to heaven? Wow! I'll give you the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. God's original plan had never been done away with. See, a lot of you have went through troubles, trials. You've had you made mistakes. But God's original plan, let me ask, let me go slow, let me slow down. Adam gave it away. Eve messed up, Eve, Adam took part of it, he gave it away, right? It, you know, Eve didn't mess up. It was Adam's to give away. I'll just throw that in. Amen? So you can blame Eve all you want, but Adam gave it away. So all these years went by of turmoil and toughness and floods and earth opening it up and People getting sucked in the earth, the fire coming down out of heaven. All this went on. But God's plan had never changed for man. Think, close your eyes. Think about trouble you've been in your life. Think about some of the things you've been through. And when you weren't so holy like you are tonight, right? When you weren't acting holy. Some of y'all weren't acting holy last night. But, but you remember that? It, 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 God's, let me tell you something. And you've been through it. You've been in it. You've been a superstar and you've been gum on somebody's feet, right? Amen. You think about all that. But God's plan, say it with me. Say, God's plan, God's plan for, me for me has never changed. Has never changed. Jesus changes not. Jesus changes. I'm the one that changed. So His original plan for you and me has never changed. No matter what you've done. 
you can choose to stay in the position you're in, and you can keep giving this. That would be like you got a robber in your house, right? And you got a security system, right? The blood of Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost. And he's out there trying to beat your door down with a with a with a rock with a you know with a crowbar or something. And you're like, hey, can I shoot you the code to my alarm code? And you say, well, that would be foolish. You do it every single day. You people pray some not you people. People pray, the devil hears the prayers. If you don't pray in tongues, the devil hears everything you pray. He understands English, but he don't understand Shed Robokoda Mashata. He don't speak that language. He speaks English, Spanish, Hebrew. He don't speak that. You understand? His original plan has never been done away with. We were completely restored to his plan for us to what? Rule and reign, right? And he wants us. Here's what he wants to do. He won the victory, right? He, did, he, did he win the victory? Amen. He wants Doug and me to enforce that victory. He wants Lynn to enforce that victory. He wants uh, the earth and uh, the church today. Nobody, the church, nobody respects the church as powerful. Nobody looks to us when people have cancer anymore, right? Or they have problems or issues anymore. They go, they go to these, they pay fifty thousand dollars for, uh, you know, a rug rehab. They fall. I'm gonna tell you this. You know, let me tell you, I got rehab. I got filled with the Holy Ghost one night and I threw it all away. I know that don't give you no seven-step program, amen. But that, that's, that's all I needed. I, when I begin to enforce the victory of Jesus Christ in my life, things begin to happen. <laughs> I discovered that God's plan for me never ended. I knew God had called me at nine years old to preach the gospel. And I, I weedled through my teenage years as a misfit. In my early 20s as a misfit. And you would think God had forgot about me. But his plan for me never changed. He knew I'd stand here tonight back when I was sitting in the jail cell. <laughs> and didn't know no better, right? He knew me. He knew it, right? When I was at Big Haynes Creek in the middle of nowhere at 3 o'clock in the morning, he didn't know how I was going to find my way home, right? I'm telling you, he knew it, but his plan for me never changed. It's just I had to catch up with what his plan was. So Romans 6 and 20 says this. God wants us to enforce that victory, right? Look at Romans 16 and 20. And the God of peace will be, will, what? Crush Satan under your feet, what? Shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ with you. Amen. We were, say, I was born to rule. Rule over what? Say, rule over creation. Over darkness. Overtake hell. And declare Jesus wherever I go by preaching and teaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. Amen. Say, I was born to rule, rule over creation, over darkness, to overtake hell, to declare Jesus wherever I go, preaching and teaching, demonstrating the power of the gospel, the kingdom of God. Amen. Say amen. Now that sin has entered into the world, and it has, we see it. It's in your TVs. I was talking about grace class last night. When you allow your, your, your mind and your eyes to be clouded by what you see and hear, in your ears, by the TVs, by profanity. Profanity should never come out of your mouth. Do you know that? You should never even type it, say it, do it. We've all done it. But you shouldn't do it. Amen? Right? And where, where, did, where, did, where, did, where did you learn that from? Other people. Right? Did God, did God teach you that? Did God tell you to watch those nasty, dirty movies with bad words in it? And you can go, Bishop, you're being a policeman now. I'm telling you, do what you want to do, but there's consequences to what you do. You won't walk in resurrection power when you fill in your head full of that junk. I'll just tell you, I'm just giving that. That sounds bad to see, don't it? Preachy. I'm just telling you, Hollywood's got to figure out, that is Satan's greatest tool is piping into your telephone and piping into your TV sets every day, right? It is, I'm telling you. That's why people don't read their Bible. That's why people don't study the Word of God, read books anymore. Creation, say creation, it's been infected by darkness, heartaches, demonic influence. Do you agree with that? Say amen. 
But guess what? Our rule is still there. Right? And, 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 and if our rule is still there, we're now to be focused on exposing and undoing the works of the devil. Would you agree? I like to expose him. I'm going to tell you this. I won't play no more. Y'all, you, you people want to play? I, don't, I'll play? I ain't playing. I will call you out and expose you as a fraud that you are when I see you being a fraud. I'm just going to tell you, this is a new season. I done, got, I, I done got this in my fast. God said, you need to start exposing these people playing games. <laughs> Y'all Wednesday night crowd, can I say this? I, I, I might offend Sunday morning people. I ain't going to offend you, Emma. You people need to sit down in church. And, and, and take notes and write the word of God down. Put the phones down. Take care of your children. We'll create a ruling reign. We're sitting in here playing. That's right. God created me and you to change the earth. And you, you wonder what Susie Joe is doing on Instagram. Or whatever it is. Instagram. I didn't, I didn't say a bad word. Is it? Forgive me, Jesus. That's not a bad word, is it? What's it called? Instagram? Well, it could be that, couldn't it? Call it. I don't have it. But people roaming around, people's kid roaming, and God created us to rule and reign, and God's got a message, and He's teaching you how to control, uh, to to enforce the, the 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 power of God over the rulers of darkness, Amen. And we're more worried about what we're going to eat for, at Taco Bell. Do you understand that we've been called? You, do you know how disappointed God is when He looks at the church today? How disappointed He is when He looks at the earth today, and all. The ultimate price was paid to get what we have, but nobody, nobody, nobody wants to use it anymore. Resur everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody wants to enforce it on earth. So let's go slow. You don't know heaven on earth? I just read it to you. Whatsoever is bound on earth will be bound in heaven. So if you bind heaven on earth, study it, what, what, what's going to happen? If you don't know heaven on earth, you won't realize that. If you don't know Jesus on earth, you're not going to know him in heaven. Heaven's invaded earth. When Jesus came out of the tomb, heaven touched earth. Now, I know we can get all technical and say there's going to be a new heaven, new earth. We'll figure that out later. I'm telling you for right now what you've got to enforce, right? And it's your duty to do that. And you cannot take this lightly. You understand? You cannot take this lightly. That's why it's so important. That's why it's so important to pay attention to the, to the instruction that God has given through the man of God or the women of God that are minister. You heard it from Pastor Stacy the other day. Haggai was like, I ain't got time for you goofy people. I'm going to build it. My temple may not be as great as Joel seems in your eyes, but in the eyes of God, it's greater. And my church may not look like, what's what, the potter's house that T.D. Jakes has got, but my house of glory is just as important as his. And I will, oh, you're just going to build this little add-on. Is that the best you can do? That's what God said, do, and I think I'll just do it. My temple's filled with glory. What is your temple filled with? And when glory fills the temple, sickness cannot invade. Darkness cannot invade. When, when glory is filling the temple, there is no room for darkness to invade. Lights are on, right? You see them? Darkness cannot invade here when those lights are on. You turn them off, what happens? It gets dark. But when the light is shining and there's glory shining, and that's why these people here tell you, I'm, what is it, OCD? If there's a light bulb out, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to drive them nuts so they get it replaced. I can't, I'm like staring at it while I'm preaching. It bothers me, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and see that, but see, most people wouldn't care. I used, to, I used to go preach revivals. They'd have one or two lights barely burning in the sanctuary. It'd be so dark I couldn't hardly even see them, right? And I know we turn lights off, so, but what I'm saying is that that's the way our life is. We let, you ever seen people going down the road with one headlight? You know what I mean? You can't see as good. I'm going to tell you people, you may not realize this. You think you can see really good, but you can't. Okay? And that's the same way in our life. When we got a bulb out or we got darkness invading our, our, our light, we got to change the light bulb. We got to get every, every bulb, every outside light, every inside light should be burning all the time. Amen? Heaven should exude out of God's people. Not only heaven, but resurrection power, authority, amen, domain, 
enforcing the victory that God has given us. Right? Does that make sense? I'm not mad, I'm just telling you. <laughs> right? Creation has been infected by those. So we're now focused on exposing and undoing the works of the devil. Heal the sick, right? You believe that? Look at Matthew 10 and 8. I'll just give it this. You believe it? Is this good? Is it helping you? Do you understand? Right? Satan's like, I don't want your authority. I don't want it. I don't want it. Quit giving. Y'all just keep giving it to him. Don't. You, oh, I feel I've got a migraine. You just gave him glory. Even if you got one, don't say it. You got to, you know, I may, have, I may have something going on in my knee right now. I don't know. But I ain't going to tell nobody. You understand? Because I'm not going to give him no glory because my light is so shining. The glory will push the pain out of my knee. But if I tell you that I got knee issues, then I just gave the devil glory and gave him authority that he don't even want. But he's like, if you give it, if you give it, I'll use it. Praise the Lord. Right? He don't even want you. He just wants you to worship him. You are healed. You are well. You're a manifested supernatural being that was created to, inf to infiltrate the earth and enforce the victory of Jesus Christ. Amen. If, did I read it? I didn't read it. Heal the sick. Who's supposed to do this? So who is supposed to do this? Not me. Not just me. Heal the sick. Cleanse the leopards. What? Okay. When's the last time y'all raised anybody from the dead? I've had one person. My grandmother. In front of my whole family. I had a lady dance on the bed. I was telling IBTC about that the other night. You remember that? Family said, oh, she can't handle visitors. I said, I'm going in anyway. Praise the Lord. She near down. She had a bad, 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 I mean, was in pain, screaming. I got here. Still alive. This is 15 years ago. I walked in there. I, I said, you want me to pray? She said, oh, I need you to pray. I said, praise the Lord. Start thanking God for healing. I grabbed her by the hand, Linda, like this. I grabbed her by the hand. She's laying in the bed. Pain. You ever see anybody sick, got tubes all in there? She was in pain. I began to pray. I felt, stand up as you do. I began to pray. I felt somebody stand up and just kind of trot your feet a little bit. I was like, shut that robot I was, I was like, you know, people, everybody done scattered out of the room. I looked up. That woman was dancing in the bed. Amen. Power of God hit me. I hit the floor. They was calling nine. They was trying to get paramedics, trying to figure out what was going on. She was rejoicing in the Lord. She's still alive today. Power of God. To God be the glory. But resurrection power still exists today if you... How does it not, you know why it don't work in people's life? It, because we go to the hospitals, we want to all poo-poo on them, amen. And go, oh, you don't, get out of that bed. Come on. That's resurrection power. Yes. You're healed. <laughs> Kick them out of the bed. <laughs> Nobody calls me in the hospital very much anymore. I didn't have to go on any visits after that. <laughs> very rare. July the 4th. Some of y'all heard, how many of y'all have heard the story about my grandmother? How many of you have it? Can I tell you real quick? Well, you want to hear it? Fourth of July, my grandmother, she, she had been, she had not, she had been, had recovered from a stroke, and she was doing really good. She was enjoying a wonderful holiday at my mom's house. We were swimming in the pool. I was swimming in the pool with my, my was kids, boys who were younger, and uh, I don't remember who was on the pool. We were in the pool. She was sitting on the porch, and I looked up there on the deck outside, and I seen there was a little disturbance. She kind of slumped over, and they were kind of, daddy was trying to get her in, and my sister was trying to get her in. And they start screaming, okay? And, and I, was like, I was like, swimming in the pool, and guys like, Terry. I was like, what? I'll just swim. I'm swimming. There's, you hear them in there. I heard them in there yelling. I don't know what they were yelling. You know, they were in the room, and they're, I could hear them. Everybody else kind of got out of the pool. I was like, still swimming. He's like, I'll swim in their lap. I swam. I swam in there for a few minutes. Finally, my sister comes out there, and she said, what are you doing? Grandma, you know, ain't breathing or something. I don't know what she said. She yelled it. God said, take it in her lap. Terry, don't get in no hurry. I did it, swim it, climbed out of that ladder, dried myself off, walked up the stairs, walked in the room, and they had her laid. They had call 911. Completely blue, not breathing. As I was walking up, I said, God, I don't want to be selfish. I don't know what I'm going to find when I get in here, but God, I want you to get glory out of whatever's happening. God, if you believe, and I believe that she needs to live and live a little long, live longer, then God, you let her open her eyes and get up. 
And I said, if not, God, it's your time to go, then you know what's better than I do, but I'm going to do what you told me to do. I did, ex- I did exactly the way you told me to do. I walked in, I-, I grabbed her by the hand, I picked her hand up, and I began to pray, and I began to believe, and I began to tell her to open her eyes, and I began to shout out to God and believe God. She opened her eyes, she kind of choked a little bit, and she breathed, and she sat up. I said, oh, my God, Grandma, you must have passed out. She said, no, I didn't pass out. She said, I heard him when he prayed, and when he prayed, I opened my eyes. Paramedics came. Nobody said a word. Because my family is full of unbelief. But they can rest assured. Grandma lived two, three years, four years after that. That they seen a miracle take place that day. She testified of it. She made sure everybody knew it. My brother, I went outside later. He goes, what took place? I said, Grandma got raised from the dead. He says, is that is all you're going to say? I said, that's all I'm going to say. It's the power of God. i got to enjoy grandmother for a few more years, right? Amen. That's the God that we serve. Now, I'm not telling you that. To God be the glory for everything. We should see that more. We should see it more. We should obey God's voice more. How many times is God speaking that to us and we don't even hear it? Hmm? Same resurrection power that existed on the day that Lazarus came out of the tomb. He just, I just told you. Jesus gave it to you. I don't understand And it's hard to comprehend why people in the church don't take what God has freely given to you. Why would we take salvation but nothing else? I want you to think about that the rest of your fast. Why would you? Salvation is great. It's the first gift, the greatest gift. It's wonderful because we know we got eternal life with Jesus Christ. Wherever he is, we're there. But why do so many believers walk through the earth timid, being cast out, being sick their whole life, addicted their whole life. Their children are messed up. They oh, ain't got no favor nowhere. None of that stuff. The children act just like them. They pull mouth and they pull mouth and they pull mouth and they ain't got nothing. Why is that? Because they didn't operate the way that God created them to operate. If we as believers equipped with God's power, if we are, and we are, right, then certainly aren't we equipped to give it away? If you're equipped with God's power, Jesus said, freely I receive, freely I give. So if I've got it, why should I impart it into you? Well, Bishop, that's Jesus. No, Jesus told me to do it. Oh, let me go further. He didn't just tell me. He told Wally to do it and Doug and Lynn. So when you go out and tell people, say, well, Bishop said he's, he's God on earth. You can tell him I told you you were too. Because you are. And I didn't say it. Don't, if you get mad at, don't get mad at me, get mad at Jesus. Because he said, all authority I give to you, that greater you would do, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. Who did he tell to do that? Res- so that tells me that resurrection power lives in me, and that, that's what the devil's scared of. That you could take somebody that was bummed out on drugs, about ready to kill themselves, and now they're preaching the gospel. You see what I'm talking about? That's what he's afraid of. <laughs> and that's why he's afraid of this church. Because we are a bunch of misfits that everybody else done gave up on. All the churches, society gave up. Everybody else gave up on us. <laughs> My God, the, the first Baptist church of Chosen Frozen gave up on me. But guess what? I'm still here. Now I'm leading a bunch of radicals just like me. Renegades. Y'all renegades. <laughs> y'all, y'all ain't care. We, we bust into this place in the middle, on the other side of the earth. Ain't got a clue. I was laughing when I was like, these people don't have a clue where they're at. I don't know where I'm at. And we're busting through in the middle of the night, and we're going to go preach the gospel. If, do you know where you were? If I gave you a map, so let's, go to, let's go to the airport. Do you know where you were? There ain't no street signs. How are you going to find your way home? These folks are radical. They're in the middle of nowhere. They, they in the, you know what? But because God gave it to me, I gave it to them. That seemed to, watch this. You want your children ain't got no desire? Because you ain't got no desire. And you ain't gave them no desire. Why well, my kids are you ain't got the Holy Ghost. And you, because if you ain't got it, you can't give it away. Why is my wife? Because freely, you know what? You ought to be praying somebody would get. I wish my parents would have gave it to me. I had to figure it out on my own. Amen. But guess what? I'm bragging on my kids. Whatever my kids do, they'll turn to gold. Amen. Because I preached it and I imparted it into their life 
And I believe whatever they do, that God, he, he moves heaven and earth to make it work for them. You have that power. Amen. You figured it out. You gave it to your daughters. And now you're seeing the results of it, right? right? Once you figured it out, I have resurrection power. I have, my God, I was going home to die, but now I'm living. So let me teach my daughter. My God, somebody. Let me teach my daughters how to live. You impart that. So if I can get you people to buy in, you're going to teach somebody else. Then we got an army on the rise. You see it? Amen. You got it. You got the authority. The devil don't want it. Just take what is rightfully yours. You're, say, I'm equipped to give it away. I'm almost done. Oh, so here it goes. The invasion of God in the earth. You don't have to say it, but I'm just going to tell you. I'll tell you. You write this down. You want to write it down? The invasion of God in the earth come through people who have been endued with power the invasion of God in the earth. How am I doing, Tanya? I'm, okay, I'm going slow. Good. She told me you usually go slow. The invasion of God in the earth comes through people who have been endued with power from on high. I ain't done. It gets better. I'll go again. The invitation, the invasion of God in the earth comes through people. That's why he's scared of you. That's why you face so much resistance. He's afraid of what you're going to do. He knows how crazy I am, but if I get all y'all as crazy as I am about him, then he knows he can't stop us. That's why he's fought us so hard. Man, this is a battle. But it's not my battle. The battle's not mine. We used to sing a song. It's Little David or something like that. The battle's not mine. He already won it. All I got to do is enforce it. Right? The invasion of God on the earth comes through people who have been to do with power from on high and here's the key. And learn how to release it to a lost and dying world. So the invasion of God in the earth comes through you people who have been endued with power. I've showed you scriptures, right? Not what I said. This is, I, I'm going to tell you. This message tonight is basically, on Wednesday nights I basically just get scriptures and, and I talk about them. I'm just telling you what Jesus says. All right? Those people that have been doing with power from on high, and, they, and, and those that learn, learn. Jesus had to learn. Amen. There ain't no shortcut. You people trying to, you know what? Oh, I'm going to give y'all something to think about. Can I? I don't want to get into the big theology thing. That if you don't understand heaven here, you won't understand it there. I'm just being honest with you. If you don't understand shouting and impartation here, you will not understand sharing and impartation there. How can you live, how could you live with crazy people like us in heaven if you couldn't live, worship with crazy people like us on earth? Because I can tell you, I can back up everything that we do and everything that I said with the word of God. You've been in do with power on high. And, you, and, and this is how it is. The invasion comes by when you learn how to release it to a lost and dying world. Can I, can I tell you this? Jesus had to learn how to release it to a lost and dying world. How do you believe it? Well, Bishop, how do you say that? What do you do for his first 33 years? You know the story. They say he was a carpenter, right? Right? Didn't they know what they said? What, what, what happened to Jesus that started his ministry? Got filled with the Holy Ghost. When? When he got baptized. When did he? Did, when did he become? When did the enemy really notice? Uh oh. After that, when Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, he said, "Uh oh." He didn't understand how God. He listen. The devil didn't understand. He knew God was up to something, but he didn't know how he was going to do it. He didn't think he could do it. He said, he knew what the prophet says. He said, they got to be born of a seed of a woman. Well, and he got to be perfect. So we know a man and a woman together, they can't be perfect. So there's no way he could be born from a woman. So how is he going to come? No, God can't do it. God did it. You see what I'm talking about? So, but he didn't recognize it. He didn't understand it. See, that, the devil didn't know who you were or what you were until you got filled with the Holy Ghost and you got led in this wilderness that you're in. 
But then he became a threat. Because he knows when you come out of the wilderness, you're going to be in due with power. And here's the problem. Listen to me. He can't destroy. The only place he can destroy you at is in the wilderness. When you come out and do with power, you're going to do what Jesus did. And he knows it. So if he can stop you now before you get out of it, he'll tell you just stay right here, right where you are. Die in this wilderness. Most people did in that day. And not come out like Jesus did. He had no control once Jesus came out. When David came out of the wilderness, Saul had no control. When Paul came out of the wilderness, he was Saul. He came out, the devil had no chance. He scared even the other apostles. They're like, who this guy's wild, man. He used, to, he used to kill people. Now he's preaching the gospel. I don't know about this. Right? Do you know who you are? Do you understand what you were created, who you were created to be? That's why it's important to thank God every day in prayer and say, God, you know, I, I see who I am in the scriptures. I understand who I am in the scriptures. God, let thank you for letting me have a better understanding of how to control my thoughts. How to control my body. How to control, even impart into my children and give them this great gift and these great gifts that you give me. You know, freely I gave it to you. God gave it to me and freely we should give it to others. Amen. And you have the power and you have the authority if you're a born again believer tonight to come out of the place you're in. You are somebody. I don't care how young you are, how old you are. You are somebody. And I'm telling you right now, God has created you to go out these four walls and have an impact in the earth. But you've got to do it at home. You gotta do it on social networks. You gotta, man, you ought to, you ought to be inviting everybody to this church. You ought to be filling this place up. I'm telling you, you got sick family members. I promise you get them in here where the Holy Ghost is, they'll get healed. I'm gonna tell you, from about seven, about, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about where, where, where Mike is, you know, back. I, I walk back there, man, it's like hitting a wall. We got to get them in the back, same as the ones up here on the front, right? We got to, you know, you know what? You have, do you not have the power to tell them? You know, hey, you're missing something up here. You know, you know, people say, well, you shouldn't offend. But I praise the Lord. You better impart what you got. You see somebody playing, playing Angry Birds. I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna be an Angry Bird if I catch them. Amen. God gave me this message: go change the earth, and you playing Angry Birds. Amen. We have, it doesn't make sense, does it? We have the power. We have the authority to go out and make a difference. In our life. We have the power to change our marriages. We have the power to change our churches. We have the, we have the power to change our schools and our nation if we want to. It's not about yelling at the scoreboard. It's about imparting what we know. We're, give me a tongue-talking politician that's filled with the Holy Ghost. I'll vote for them. Amen. They won't do it. They're scared. But they'll yell at the scoreboard. Elect me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's what we need in this world. But we can take it back. Do you know in Nairobi, they have tongue-talking president. Tongue-talking cabinet. Now, no Muslim. Born-again believers. You know, what the, you know what the head TV station's got? They got tongue-talking TV hosts. Tongue-talking producers. Tongue-talking people that tell you, hey, you are, you're a preacher. They told one of our girls, hey, you're a preacher. You should know you should be ready all the time. That's a media lady. Get up. I'm up there like four, three. I, well, am I supposed to do something? The guy's like, you better preach. Calls you, he just calls it up. Whatever. There's 40 million people looking at you. Just preach. All I see was a guy going four, three, two, one. But you see what I'm saying? I'm in do with power. I have something to share. I have something to give. I have something to impart in those people, amen. I am the resurrection through Jesus Christ. I have the power, amen. I've got the authority, amen. The devil don't want it anyway. Why don't I give it to somebody else? <laughs> you got something tonight, didn't you? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. If you like this, just wait till Sunday. Good morning. Praise the Lord. I'm excited. You know what? Because every time God gives me a new nugget to expose the devil, he gives me another tool... That joker ain't got nothing. He's been trying to give it away for 2,000 years. Amen. All he wants is somebody to worship him because he's, a, he's, a, he's like one of them ego things. You know what I mean? He just wants people to, to worship him, right? He don't care about your authority because he, you know why? You know why he don't care about it? Because it ain't going to do him no good. He's just trying to get all the glory he can get until he, till he gets thrown into the bottomless pit, right? And he will get there. Guess what? I just want to help push him a little further there. Amen. 
I want to keep him out of life. When I recognize him coming in, I'm going to shoot blood at him with the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm going to proclaim the blood. I'm going to claim the blood. I'm going to bleed the blood. I'm going to plead the blood over my, over my house. I'm going to plead it over my car. I'm going to, me and my wife, we were pleading it over the whole house before we came. Our children, their cars, <laughs> everything. You know? Why not? I have the right to. I'm not scared. Are you scared? We're going to Peru. We're going on a mission. I'm not talking about a mission. I'm talking about a mission. Power of God. If you're not equipped and ready, then you want to go. This is going to be powerful. It's going to be mighty. It's going to be mighty manifested. They've never seen. God spoke to me. He said they have never seen what's about to hit them. They ain't never, they going, it's going to be a tornado like you ain't never seen. I'm going to go at it with everything I got. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to hit it. And so I'm going to tell Garrett, I'm going to say, hit this thing as hard as you can. We're going to go for it. And we're going to see thousands of souls saved. I believe it. And then it's going to spread, and then more people are going to come, right? Why not you? Say, why not me? You are the resurrection. You're the only resurrection this world's ever going to see. Resurrection power lives inside of you. Freely he gave it, freely you should give it away. You should impart your, what God has given you to a lost and dying world every single day. And you should enforce victory of the cross every day. And if we're not enforcing that victory, then we're, we're falling short. Stand to your feet. Come get a song. Yeah, give the Lord a hand clap praise. That was good. Praise the Lord. Amen. God's so good. He's been good to me. Has he been good to you? I'm going to tell you this. If tonight you're in a position or in a place where you don't really feel all authority and you don't really feel all empowered and you don't really feel all in duty and you don't really feel like the resurrection, this is a great night. This is a great night for you to come to the altar and just thank God for your restoration. You know, there could be a transformation in your life tonight. It's not how you came in. My wife teach, taught on this Sunday night. It's from this day forward. From this day forward. You know what? I'm going to rebuild the temple. I'm going to rebuild my life. Because God has given me every tool that I can do to rebuild my life. I'm going to do it. And then I'm going to share how great God is with everybody I see. How amazing he is. How he saved my life. Brought me back. Put me on solid ground. Now I'm preaching the gospel. I got sent home to die. But now I'm living. Amen. I show up.